So welcome to Calm Night's two lecture. I'm Huan Zhuohu. Today I'm going to introduce the concept nettle slicing. Hopefully, after this lecture, you will get to know the knowledge about what nettle slicing is, how important nettle slicing for the future networks, and how we can use it in the future. But before starting the lecture. I'd like to mention the current situation because of the coronavirus. As we all know that we have to move our lecture online, therefore I cannot get any feedbacks from you during the lecture, and also there will be no interactions and discussions between us. So I give my email address in the slides. If you have any unclearness or questions, please send me an email. I would like to introduce more in details to your questions. So now let's start the lecture. So the content what I'm going to present today is mainly based on the book "Computing in Communication Networks," in particular the chapter three. Network slicing. The author of this chapter is Professor Fabrizio Ganelli. He is very experienced with network slicing. He has already given many tutorials and workshops about network slicing in different conferences and also the events. So the content of this chapter is very valuable. I highly recommend you also read this chapter. It will give you a deeper understanding about the content from today's lecture. If you have already registered in the OPA system, you will get this book soon. So today's lecture it consists of five parts. At the beginning, I will introduce some new demands to the future networks. And then we see that if our current network can fulfill the demands, and to show that why we need the network slicing, how the network slicing comes to the topics, and then I will give the concept of network slicing. After we know what network slicing is. A detailed introduction about network slicing will be given, including the life cycle in the part three, and some typical architectures in the part four. In the end, I will give some explanations that how we use network slicing in several practical examples, and to see that what kind of benefits. We can get for the different use cases. Now let's go to the first part: new demand to network. You have already learned the evolution history of various network in the previous lectures. Nowadays, we are more and more closer to 5G networks. In contrast to the previous networks, 5G is not not only targeting to the services for humans; it also targets services for other physical objects, such as cars, wearable sensors, and so on. So-called Internet of Things. So 5G is not just a wireless extension of Previous networks, it will be a holistic design of the hardware, the software, and also the functionalities of the network will not only be the transportation of data. It will be extended to the data storage and also data computings. Therefore. A lot of new use cases and requirements are required in the domain of 
5G networks. This slide shows three features of 5G and some related new use cases. We realize that the whole 5G will require one network with low delay, high throughput, and high resilience, and also many other requirements. Luckily, most services do not need low latency, high resilience, and high throughput at the same time. For example, most control applications in the scenario of factory automation, this application only need low latency but do not require high throughput. On the other hand, video services, the, this service demand high throughput but are more tolerant to delays. Imagine a scenario in a future. You want to use your autonomous driving car to go to a factory. For the autonomous driving cars, it needs a very low delay communications to ensure that the surrounding environment is safe and also the, the driving can be precise. And meantime, you sit in the car and listen to music, maybe streaming some videos. Therefore, you also need a very high throughput of the network. Once the car it's close, it arrives the destinations, it wants to know if there is a free parking slot in the parking house. In such kind of situations, a lot of sensors in the parking house will tell the car if there is a free space. So a high resilience are required. From this scenario, we can see that in the future, the networks need to serve customers or services with very different needs. So now we have to ask ourselves if our current network can fulfill such kind of demand. This is a traditional network. There are several packets from multiple services are transmitted in this network. Uh, these services are marked with different colors. The traditional network basically offers a best efforts service, which means each network devices, they only try their best to send out the packet. Therefore, the traditional network is without any guarantees on timeliness or delivery of data. Second, the traditional network is commonly not capable of supporting quality of service, especially on the complete end-to-end -end quality of services, because each of the network devices don't have, doesn't have a holistic view of the whole network. In addition, as we mentioned before, emerging services are expected to grow. The traditional network cannot support the increased requirements from these emerging services. Because of the best effort service, the overall consideration of end-to-end -end quality of service is still limited by the need to introduce relevant modifications to the whole internet architectures and its protocols. So for this re reason, the deployment of those modifications is still limited. Also, it is well known that a single architecture or configuration it's not capable of supporting all requirements at the same time because it would need to balance among divergent solutions. This could lead to a several physical networks 
with individual determined quality of service parameter sites. Also, applications and services are continuously evolving, and it's extremely difficult to predict the future service requirements. From last slide, we can conduct that there are several limitations in traditional network. For future networks, we need to support different end-to-end -end quality of service. The need to enable rapid de deployment of the related network configuration and the need to be capable of multiple quality of service parameter sets on one shared physical network infrastructure. All this leads to generate the idea of network slicing.